Hey guys, welcome back. This is Faisal Khan. And in this video, we're going to focus on the Amazon Connect security, the design principle for developing and securing your contact center. It is important that you put security in a center point of your uh, focus because if environment is not secure properly, is not managed properly, it could create various problems. Security includes your ability to protect your information, systems, and asset while delivering business values through your risk assessment and, of course, mitigation, you're mitigating any sort of strategy. Now, this section provides an overview about design principles, best practice, and, of course, questions around your security for your Amazon Connect workload. Now, Amazon Connect security journey is not something that you do at once and you forget about it. It is something that has to be ongoing for uh, throughout your journey in managing your Amazon Connect platform. Now, after you made a decision that you want to move your workload to your Amazon Connect, meaning that you want to move your contact center to Amazon Connect, you need to understand how security works in Amazon itself. Now, Amazon security is not just simple. There is not dedicated security just for Amazon Connect. Amazon security is an overall view of the entire Amazon AWS platform. So you need to understand what is your responsibility versus what is the AWS responsibility. Now, when you move your computer system or PCs or servers or data to cloud, security responsibilities become a share because the network is no longer under your control infrastructure no longer under your control so you have certain responsibility when it comes to security amazon and aws has some responsibility when it comes to security aws will be responsible for securing the underlying infrastructure that provides uh, support to the cloud and also uh, for example patching any security uh, vulnerability identifying vulnerability to an operating system managing the uh, pa patch upgrade, ensuring minimized downturn, uh, downtime part of, the, part of their responsibility. You and I, on the other hand, who are administrator of the platform, must be responsible for anything that we put onto the cloud under our account. Now, obviously, what goes into another customer accounts is something, something, is, not, something is not under our control, and we are not going to be concerned about that. But we're going, to we're going to rely on AWS shared responsibility to ensure that their, their activity doesn't affect our environment as well. So when it comes to AWS responsibility, AWS is going to ensure that you have a proper CPU to uh, uh, compute per, uh, capacity, storage capacity, make sure the data that are stored in AWS is secured by Amazon AWS or team. Uh, for example, not being uh, accessible from unauthorized users and ensuring that even M M AWS employee themselves may not access those database uh, data unless, of course, authorized. So there are many different responsibilities that you have to manage. Which AWS services you will use will determine how much configuration work you have to perform as part of your security responsibility. So, for example, if you are response, if you're deploying an Amazon Connect contact center, but then you have 20 other Amazon services running, your overall security has to include not just Amazon Connect, but all those 20 server services that you're running as well. When you use Amazon Connect, the shared model will reflect the AWS and the customer responsibility at a very high level, as shown here. So, customer data is something that Customer will manage, make sure that only authorized people have access to their AWS Connect or Amazon Connect, meaning that it is up to you and me to control who can access our instance, what agent can do, what app up, uh, administrator can do, what the temporary employees can do. It is our responsibility. And we can control that using what we call is IAM account. In Amazon Connect, you have identity and access management service, which is basically a repository uh, of a user account with policies in place. You must create appropriate uh, user account and policies. Now, if your Amazon Connect is going to connect or integrate with various, let's say, AWS services, in that case, what you want to do, you want to use the IAM policy on role to control which services AWS Connect can access and vice versa. 
Now, when it comes to encryption, it is up to you and me to make sure the data is encrypted using either a predefined key that is available into your account or we create or manage our keys ourselves. Now, if you're not familiar with how to manage encryptions and keys and security, please uh, look at a course, AWS Solution Architect uh, Solution well, AWS security specialty course to ensure that you have a proper understanding of that. Now, we don't offer this course as, the, as of this moment. We are focused on collaboration and contact center, but there are hundreds of books available. But to get a better idea, please visit elearning.voicebootcamp.com. We may have some white papers where you can download in terms of understanding how to secure your AWS account. Op uh, encryption is optional, uh, but it is highly recommended to ensure that your conversation that are being recorded by Amazon Connect are encrypted because these are conversations that you don't want people to have access. If you are, let's say, a government organization, if you are a banking environment, or if you are concerned about data privacy, you also want to make sure that from the agent PC to the AWS or from a user to the AWS platform, that data are encrypted in transit as well. Now, you by simply using a key to encrypt your data is not enough. You want to make sure that those keys are rotated over a period of time to ensure that they are uh, as protected from being hacked uh, as any other time. Now, from an Amazon responsibility or manage uh, security that are managed by AWS would be, for example, making sure the hard drives don't crash making sure the network has adequate bandwidth to route traffic to your environment, uh, operating system patching, vulnerability, uh, monitoring for any sort of attack on their infrastructure is something will be managed by the AWS team. Of course, AWS global infrastructure will also ensure that if one, if in case an availability zone goes down, that there are backup availability zone available for your environment to ensure a smooth operational. Now, the IAM or Identity and Access Management is probably one of the most uh, important service in, in, uh, in AWS. It is the center point of pretty much everything when it comes to accessibility. There are four types of Amazon Connect personas based on the activities being performed. First of all, in a, from an Amazon Connect perspective, I'm not talking about the 200 other server services that AWS provide. We're only focusing on the Amazon Connect. Amazon Connect has four different type of individual. You got the administrator, you got uh, the contact. Well, you, for, sorry, first of all, you got the master administrator of your AWS account, which is the IAM administrator, responsible for creating and modifying your resources and may also delegate administrative access to other principals. That the scope of this IAM administrator is focused on creating and administering your Amazon Connect instance. So this is like a kind of like the master account. Then you have an individual who is responsible as a, acting as an administrator for only the instance that you have. Amazon Connect administrator, which is a person on type number two, basically is a service administrator that determines which Amazon Connect features and resource employees should have access within your Amazon Connect console. Now, the service administrator will assign a security policies to determine who can access the Connect console and what tasks they can perform. The scope of this persona is focused on creating and administering your Amazon Connect contact center. The third type of persona that you have are the agent, Agent will interact with Amazon Connect platform, uh, uh, Amazon Connect, to perform their job duties. And this uh, this service users may con may be either a contact center agent or a supervisor. Last type of personnel that you have is Amazon serve Amazon Connect service contact. These are customers who are interacting with your contact center environment. So. You want to make sure that these four different type of users or contact have the appropriate permissions to be able to do his or her job. Now, from a security, uh, Amazon Connect security can be divided into three logical layer as described here. You have, of course, the agent workstation layer right here. You have um, 
what do you call external layer and last but not the least you got of course the aws layer which is right here and each layer will have different level of re uh, requirements so first in the agent workstation layer is not managed by aws because these are pcs or devices used by agent who are working from either on-premise, off-premise, lo remote location, from home, wherever they may be. So this, they could be even third-party services or endpoint that facilitate your agent's voice, data, and access to your Amazon Connect interface layer. Now, to ensure that you follow the best practice for this layer, pay special attention to identity access, IAM, meaning that you must make sure that you create appropriate username and password in your, in your IAM in order to access that environment. Other things to consider in workstation layer will be to mitigate any insider threat and compliance risks that are associated with the workload that help handle sensitive information. So for example, let's say your company provide e-commerce and you are collecting information that could be sensitive such as credit card information pin number maybe bank account details and when uh, when you're creating a secure ivr solutions you want to enable which should enable you to bypass any agent accessing that sensitive information so what happened is when a customer is communicating with an agent agent might say okay are you ready to make a payment and the customer is willing to give you the credit card as you collect those credit card details you want to make sure that the agent a may not should not be hearing those digits by in, either encrypting the data uh, or by pausing the recording uh, sometimes when customer enters credit card details what some contact center does they will mask out that information so agent either cannot hear it from the recording nor they can see it in the screen either so by encrypting those contact input in your contact flow you are going to be able to capture information securely without having those information being exposed to your agent or workstation because so you know although agents are working but not all agents are uh, ethical some agent might take that information pass it on to someone else for taking any sort of illegal activities on that credit card in uh, details. You should also be responsible for maintaining an allow list of AWS IP address, port number, and protocol as needed. Then you have the AWS layer. A AWS layer will include Amazon Connect and any integration with various AWS services, such as Lambda, DynamoDB, API Gateway, s3 bucket and other services the security protocol that you must follow is again make sure that you use the iam identity management to only give access to those people who need access with only the permissions that they need in order to perform their job you also want to make sure the integration with other aws services you identify each service in this use case as well as any third-party integrations that points the application for in the, into that uh, into that services also whenever possible use uh, you can use the amazon connect to integrate with the lambda functions that will run inside the customer vpc through you through the use of vpc endpoint for lambda now vpc endpoint is not available for all services for amazon connect to use now, last but not the least, you got the external layer. An external layer will connect, it's a, it basically include connect point, including chat, click to call endpoints, PSTN for voice call, integration that may be with a legacy contact center solution, such as hybrid contact center, or integration you may have with, a, with other third party solutions, such as Salesforce, Zendesk, and CRM any entry point or an exit point for a third party in your workload should be pop, should be considered as part of the external layer and you want to make sure that appropriate uh, security is in place now this layer also covers any integration customer may have with crm salesforce workforce management reporting and visualization tools and any other applications such as tablet kibana etc you should consider the following in terms of securing an ex external. First, first of all, you may want to create a contact filter for repeat and fraudulent contact using the Lambda functions 
to write a contact details to DynamoDB within your contact flow. This including the ANI, the IP address for click to dial and chat. The reason why you want to do that, there are, could be many different bot who might be just clicking on the click to chat and then there's no chat because their bot is clicking on that click to chat, click dial or click to chat options. So if you keep track of the ANI and IP address, what's going to happen is you can run a query to say how many times uh, someone clicked uh, click to chat or dial within certain period of time and no further actions took place. In that case, you want to make sure that those IP addresses are blocked. These type of things usually happen when a competitor is kind of hired a third party services to keep click, uh, providing a, a false fake click to your web chat. You also wanna make sure the ANI fraud detection solutions are being used as much as possible. You can use the Amazon Connect telephony metadata and a partner solutions that can be used to protect against the caller ID spoofing. Now, one of the most important feature that is available in Amazon Connect, which we will discuss more details for security, is called the voice ID. Now, voice ID is basically a voice biometric that allows Amazon Connect to recognize your voice and authenticate you. Active voice biometric is becoming a very popular among the banks. So when you call in a, or a airline industry, when you call in and recognize your voice and identify whether you are the original owner of that account or not. So active voice biometric applications allows contacts with the option to speak to specific phrase and use those for voice signature. Passive voice biometric allows contact to register their uh, unique voice print, like a kind of like a you know, fingerprint, and use that voice print to authenticate with any voice input that meets the sufficient length requirement for authentication purposes. So there are two ways you have voice authentication. One, you say a secret phrase, and as long as it recognizes a phrase and your voice, it will continue. Or second, which is a passive, where you record a voice message, and then every time the system you call in, the system recognize your voice and will authenticate you based on that. Now, maintaining an application integration within Amazon Connect will require any third-party application. So you wanna make sure that those third-party port numbers are restricted, that uh, it should be only allowed between uh, the specific or uh, defined IP addresses and uh, uh, in order to ensure security. You will only send the data that is only necessary, meaning that if Salesforce is asking for first name, last name, and account ID, Fine, send those three, but don't go and send their address. Don't go and send uh, amount they're owing because the sales force did not ask you for that. So only send the necessary data in order to meet the minimum requirement for an external application to handle your sensitive data. So these are some of the stuff that you need to focus on when it comes to ma managing security for your environment. So. Play, uh, make sure the IAM authentication is enabled, make sure the encryption is enabled, make sure that any third party uh, application that you use, the port number is controlled as part of the requirement and only send data that is necessary to meet the requirement. All right, so that's the overview about the security design of your Amazon Connect and AWS.